Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's press conference. Wanted to provide an update uh, on our COVID vaccination distribution efforts in our county. As of today, uh, 93,335, or about 21.79% of our population, have received the vaccination. Uh, countywide, um, about 59,605 Lucas County residents have completed the vaccination, uh, com uh, excuse me, completed completely, uh, or about 13.92%. We are now in phase 1E, which includes individuals that have cancer, kidney disease, COPD, heart disease, and obesity. So effective tomorrow, we are also in phase 2C, which expands age, uh, the ages to 40 to 49. So again, please remember, 40 to 49, but that still includes those older as well to 80 plus uh, and through there. <clears throat> the governor has announced uh, another just exciting development as of March 29th, all residents of Ohio, 16 and older will, will be eligible to receive the COVID vaccine. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is what we've been waiting for and it's going to happen on the, uh, on the 29th of March. Obviously, obviously, there are many questions about how this is going to get done. Uh, the governor has, has announced a strategy to serve all eligible people in the state of Ohio. Uh, mass vaccination sites uh, will be set up across the state. Uh, our location in, for our region, is, one of them is Lucas County Rec Center. So beginning the week of March 29th, the site will, re will remain open for up to 90 days as that regional mass vaccination site. While we do not know the actual number of doses yet, we expect uh, to have that site uh, to begin about 5,000 doses a week, and that site can easily do up to 20,000 vaccinations a week if needed. Mass vaccination sites are open to all residents, uh, regardless of the location. Also then too, as we move into uh, this increased vaccination effort, we're gonna be uh, needing volunteers for our, our site as well as uh, a number of other sites, other sites. There are volunteer opportunities for any individual who would like to help support the COVID-19 response. If you're a medical professional or a concerned adult uh, over the age of 18, you can sign up by visiting Ohio Response website and registering for the Lucas County Medical Reserve Corps. If you're looking for an opportunity to help our efforts, this is a great way to do that. It will have a huge impact our, on our community and helping us get through the next several months. Something that is uh, another amazing development for us, uh, we've partnered with TARDA and they are now going to be providing a shuttle service from downtown uh, transit hub, hub, hub to the Lucas County Rec Center beginning March 23rd at no cost. More, de more details that come over the next few days, but again, uh, just a great development for our community. The health department continues to work to remove all barriers for people getting the vaccine and the work with TARDA uh, is going to do just that. Uh, it removes another barrier or at least uh, less lessens it immensely. So again, uh, just another uh, great opportunity for us to again, get people vaccinated. So uh, it moves us into uh, another uh, great episode of Mythbusters. Uh, this is number seven. So could you go ahead, uh, Rhonda and Tom, and begin, the, begin your presentation? Hello, and welcome to Mythbusters, episode seven. I can't believe it. We are working our way through this vaccine rollout and we're so pleased to see that more and more of you are getting the vaccine. Now, let me welcome in my myth-busting partner and the true superstar of this operation, Mr. Tom Cole. Rhonda, it's so good to see you on Zoom. And I think, you know, down the road, maybe not that far down the road, I'll get a chance to see you in person, which will be, you know, fantastic. Uh, you know, it's really thrilling for us today because when we're talking about these vaccines, these life-saving vaccines that are so important in our community and changing the paradigm in our community to get back to a normal life. We have an incredible doc on today to talk about this, Dr. Carl Fernandez. Glad to be here. Thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez. We're happy to have you here. And today we have sort of three rapid fire questions that we'd like to cover with you. So we wanna get all of these questions, the adequate time that they deserve with your, your reply. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for these rapid fire questions? I'm ready to go. Okay, Tom, you wanna hit off the first question? 
Sure, we'll do, Rhonda. Um, you know, Doc, I've heard this one at work. I've heard it around the, the water cooler at other places, and it sounds, you know, it sounds a little odd, but, I, but I've heard it repeated a, a myriad of times. Will this vaccination in any way change your DNA, Doc? Absolutely not. Uh, both the Pfizer and Moderna use an mRNA, not a DNA, but an mRNA vector to, to get into the body. And the mRNA does not even get into the cell. It degenerates within 24 hours. So that it's not, not even anywhere near the DNA that, and it, can't have, it doesn't have the ability to alter the DNA. The Johnson & Johnson uses an older adenovirus vector and um, it, it's, it has nothing to do with the DNA. And you're, so that's, that's not true whatsoever. Thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez. Okay, here's rapid fire second question. If a woman is pregnant or of childbearing age, should that woman get the COVID vaccine? The answer is yes. Both the American College of uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology and the Pediatrics uh, have recommended that not only um, pregnant women, but lactating women, it's okay to get the vaccine. Um, we're continuing to follow this data, uh, but so far there are no ill effects that we can tell. But it's obviously if you get COVID virus and, uh, infection and you're in the ICU, that's a very serious thing. And in my practice, I've seen the consequences. Doc, you're knocking all these uh, questions out of the park today, uh, maybe because baseball's right around the corner. But uh, how about for children? You know, again, I hear people talking about this. I, I assume that 18 and above were vaccinating uh, those young people. So is that true? And then down the road, what about young children themselves? So the current recommendations are, uh, we don't have the data on young children. The studies were done without the pediatric population, although there are ongoing studies right now. Um, so our recommendation, we know that for children, um, that even if they get the vaccine, they're usually asymptomatic or they don't require hospitalizations in general. Do not recommend at this point that they get the vaccine. Well, you handled that like a pro, Dr. Fernandez. I am so happy that you were able to answer all of those rapid fire uh, questions. So much good information. And what I love that about this the most, Dr. Fernandez, is you are a trusted medical source. And this information is helpful and it's also accurate and correct. And hopefully will be shared with many people. Thank Doc, you. it's an honor. It's an honor today to have you on Mythbusters uh, with, uh, with Rhonda and myself. It's, it certainly is. And we applaud your work at the Toledo Clinic, exemplary work that you do. So, again, Doc, I hope we can do this again. Doc, you were outstanding. Rhonda, Thanks for I think this me is on. a segue. Rhonda, I think this is a segue where you say goodbye. I do. And I think that if Dr. Fernandez wants another career in television, he <laughs> can definitely do that. <laughs> so I, I think he's got my job, Rhonda. I think yeah. it's over. <laughs> I think it's over, Tom. <laughs> I know. But really great information shared today. Uh, Tom, it's always a pleasure being with you. And Dr. Fernandez, what, what amazing information you shared uh, today with us. I look forward to seeing you next week, Tom, for more myth busting. In the meantime, our viewers can uh, keep up to date with the latest and most importantly, the most accurate information by following the Toledo Lucas County Health Department and the V Project's web and social media pages. Until then, in the words of my good friend, Tom Cole, stay safe and stay informed. Again, uh, great information uh, to bust those myths. And again, there's there's going to be additional ones of those MythBuster videos. So again, thank you so much for doing those. Uh, at this point in time, I just want to open up for some questions. Hi, Amy, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Um, so over the next two weeks, obviously, we're going to be adding uh, hundreds of thousands of people to this eligibility list. Um, have you guys been given any indication as to if you're going to be getting more doses to accommodate that? Are you prepared to, you know, handle those much bigger numbers for people who are eligible? Yeah, uh, again, I do believe that, uh, again, that demand uh, will outweigh the supply. Uh, we know that for at least for a, a couple uh, a couple of weeks. We are going to be getting increased doses. We don't know how much. 
I've talked to the governor's office and the Ohio Department of Health several times over the last couple of days and over the last week or so, and they're assuring us that we're going to be getting more doses. We just don't know the number. We've gotten about uh, about 2,000 extra doses from last week to this week, so I would expect us to continue to see a, an increase over the next few weeks. And really, I think in May, you'll see, uh, again, really substantial numbers. Bree, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, good morning. Um, so I know we've talked, of course, you don't have a crystal ball, but you know, opening this this fire hose up um, of people, how long do you think it's going to take before, you know, the younger generations are able to get their dose out of that eligibility? I mean, should they still be kind of waiting to allow those older generations to get at the 40 plus and um, 30 plus or kind of talk about that a little bit? So again, great question. And I think you've seen what the Ohio Department of Health and the governor has, has done over the last couple of months. And again, use those age groups that are most vulnerable to make sure they get vaccinated. So again, if you're eligible to receive a vaccine, go ahead and go get it. Uh, come the 29th, it's going to get opened up to the entire community, those 16 and older. So uh, again, I think it's important for everybody to get vac vaccinated to make sure that, again, we're trying to reach that herd immunity that's 70% of the population. A follow up to that, if you don't mind, how long do you think um, it will be? I know we talked before, you know, well into the summer before everyone gets vaccinated and we get that herd immunity. Does the governor opening this up so kind of quickly uh, change that prediction a little bit? Yeah, um, I don't think it changes the prediction. Uh, I think we're kind of still right out, at least from my point of view. Uh, you, yeah, I think you talk to other individuals, they might have a, a different date. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to get back to normal by August, but I think we're going to have a substantial back to normal life come August, whatever that looks like at that point in time. We really need to get through April, May, and then into June and get people vaccinated. And again, that's that's kind of why you're seeing these these open up now the, these these mass vaccination clinics. You see what's happening in Cleveland. Uh, it's going to start, you know, becoming a much more readily available to get vaccinated across the across the state. So again, um, my my desire is to make sure that we get everybody vaccinated as soon as we can, as fast as we can. Thank you. Sure, Melissa, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, good morning. Um, can you more succinctly, I mean, people starting on the 29th when we open it up to everybody, everybody does need an appointment, correct? Can you walk us through that process so we don't have people just showing up at places, et cetera? Sure. That, Melissa, thank you very much. Yeah, you're still going to need an appointment. Uh, so that is not going to change. Uh, again, that just it just makes it more organized. And, and if you've been to one of our mass vaccination clinics, you understand that no matter who's running it, it, it you know, you, you, you get through pretty quick. And that's because we do schedule, we don't have a lineup. Uh, we're going to talk more about that, that link, uh, whether it's the state link or one of our local links. Uh, we're, we're going to be looking at how to use the, the state system coupled with our own acuity system here locally to make sure, again, we, we do this as efficiently, effectively, and easily for the community as possible. So more to come on which link to use and how that's going to work. Okay, and just one quick follow-up yeah. um, as far as the volunteers that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Can you um, kind of expand upon that. You want people to volunteer to help on every level, correct? Yeah, you know, uh, again, you know, as as we as we increase the number of vaccines, and let's just say at the rec center and any of our centers, as you increase the amount of vaccine, you're going to have to increase hours. You're going to have to increase staffing issues. Uh, you're going to have to increase those that vaccinate because again, you you can't have somebody vaccinating for you know 10, 12 hours if that's if that's how we're going to run some of these clinics. Uh, so we're going to need additional bodies, and, and again. They, they do range from everybody who can, you know, type on a computer, uh, who can direct traffic, who can give a vac uh, vaccination. Uh, and again, somebody uh, much like a EMT paramedic, a doctor, a nurse who can make sure that they're watching over those individuals when they have to sit for their 15 minutes. So it does really run the gamut. Okay, thank you. Caitlin, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey, Eric. So Lucas County last reported a new COVID death on March 12th, and that means we've gone at least five days without a new death, six if that holds true today. What are your thoughts on that, and do you expect this to be the new trend? Yeah, Kaylin, another great question. Um, as we've always said, you, you see cases increase, then you see hospitalizations increase, and then you see, uh, unfortunately, uh, they, the, the fatality uh, following that. Uh, so what we see now is a decrease in cases, 
Uh, we've seen a decrease in um, you know, hospitalizations and use of ER. And now we're, we are seeing that, that decrease in those fatalities from COVID. So it, it kind of, it's kind of run the course that we would expect. Uh, you know, the concern is watching current, you know, numbers uh, in Ohio, in, in the United States, across the world, we're seeing some spikes here and there. So again, we have to make sure that we stay vigilant uh, in the numbers uh, that are coming into us on a daily basis. Okay, and a follow-up question going back to the TARDA shuttle. Sure. Um, what days and times does that run and can you hop on at any stop or is it just the main transit hub downtown? So they're running it from the hub out to the rec center right now. And, and, and again, more to come on that. Uh, Tarda, uh, Tarda actually has kind of that plan in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to get with Tarda and they're going to be able to really lay that out and, and describe exactly what needs to be done. I will tell you that there is no charge for it. So again, that barrier is taken down as well. Andrew, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Eric. Um, according to the state uh, and and here in Lucas County, the age bracket 20 to 29 is the most cases. That's true in the state, that's true in the Lucas County, but it's also very, maybe the least medically impacted because they just don't have as many hospitalizations. How do we make sure that that age group gets vaccinated so they are then not continuing to sort of spread the virus when they don't really have a meta, a personal medical reason to maybe get vaccinated. Sure. Uh, again, uh, you're 100 right. Uh, right now, for the variants that are out there, uh, you know, we're not seeing those severe cases in those age groups. Here's here's a couple thoughts for them to really consider. Uh, you all have brothers and sisters, probably. You have mom and dad, grandma, grandpa. You have relatives that you want to go visit. Uh, you can go ahead and still spread that virus to them, especially if they haven't been vaccinated. So it's really upon all of us, no matter what age group, to do the right thing and get vaccinated so that you can protect those ones around you. Uh, and again, uh, I, I, not fear mongering, please don't, don't take this that way. But we don't know what's going to happen with the next variants. You know, are, are those variants going to be attacking a different age group? Uh, and again, we know that the vaccine does handle right now the variants that are out there pretty well. So again, we implore everybody who can get vaccinated to get vaccinated. Uh, I know University of Toledo um, is, is talking about how to get their students vaccinated. So uh, again, I, I think it's going to be a community effort to make sure that we get the message out to, to get to that age group as well too and say, yeah, you may not have those severe cases or those severe issues, but you still, you know, you still could have issues. But again, it also does help your family and everybody around you. Thank you. Yes. Amy, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. So I know we, we always talk about, you know, how many doses are you guys getting? You know, how many doses of this or that vaccine? Um, but I think something that I th might help people understand better is explaining the difference between the supply that you guys get from the Ohio Department of Health versus the federal supply, because there, you know, there's two different I guess, can you talk about that a little just so people better understand when they're booking on the health department's website, it's different than, you know, going to Walmart? Sure. You know, uh, again, the, there's a couple different pathways for the vaccine to come into our communities. Uh, one is through the Howard Department of Health, and those are the vaccines that, uh, you know, the health department's getting hospitals, uh, the FQHCs. Uh, th there's also then this, this federal allotment, which really kind of probably is going to some of those pharmacies. Uh, some of those other entities. So you do have two pathways that vaccine is getting into our communities. So uh, again, the important thing is no matter where you're going to go get the vaccine, it's all the same vaccine. There's no difference between a CVS, a Walgreens, or a, a hospital or health department. They're all the same vaccines. You need to get out and get that. Uh, the, uh, the, the issue then too comes about, you know, who can actually get the majority of those vaccines out there? You know, uh, again, our pharmacies are great and we need them to, to get the vaccines out. Uh, can a CVS do, uh, you know, 8,000 vaccines uh, a week? Uh, again, there's, there's some limiting factors there. But again, I go back to what the Ohio Department of Health and Governor has done is try to get as many providers out there to actually give vaccines. And that's going to grow. So, you know, you're going to have other pharmacies. You're going to have other entities be able to give the vaccine. So your, your ability to, you know, walk a block might be uh, easier to do than come out to the rec center eventually, but that may not be for some time. So again, uh, two different pathways, state versus federal.
So, uh, and this might help you out a little bit too, if you could see the uh, the diagram. Uh, again, um, you you can see that there's there's two different you know pots, if you would, of vaccine. Hopefully, this does help you out. You see the state versus the federal, and, and you kind of see where they're going. Hopefully, that helps. Melissa, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, I just have a quick question, um, Eric. The governor talked about you know we can open up and everything can be dropped at uh, 50 cases per 100,000 statewide for two weeks. Last week we were at 180 cases per 100,000. What do we stand this week? Uh, right now, uh, at least in Lucas County, we're about 170. I don't know the states, uh, the state 100,000. My uh, my concern right now is that we're we're seeing a little bit of an uptick in cases. Uh, again, you know, average around 50 to 55. We spiked a little bit the, a couple of days ago at 70. And, and remember, I, I get cases in every day um, and we graph those. So we can kind of tell how that is actually, the trend is actually going. Uh, I'm really, uh, really hoping that we see that, that, that level off and come down again. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we have to, we just have to watch that. Are we going to get to that 50 over 100,000 anytime soon? Uh, uh, again, I wish I had a crystal ball. Um, you know, is June uh, is is June a, a maybe a date to shoot for sometime in that in that arena? Yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be anytime this month um, or May. But again, uh, that could change. Okay, thank you. Sure, Brian, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Eric. Um, there's still a lot of misinformation out there online about uh, people saying that people are being hospitalized, they're dying, they're having a lot of negative reaction to the vaccines. What have you seen in Lucas County? Have you seen any serious events, including hospitalizations or obviously deaths? Brian, thank you for actually asking that question. No, we have not seen anything. And uh, I think you've seen the research that's been out on some of these uh, supposed cases where the vaccine has caused issues. And, and again, using the science behind it, uh, again, they, they haven't seen it. L let me talk real quick. I, I think this goes, this goes pretty well to your question. A, a typical vaccine uh, in, in those trials, you're looking probably about a 5,000 individuals who've actually went through that, that trial to get that vaccine online. Moderna, they had, over, they had about 30,000 individuals. Uh, Johnson Johnson and Pfizer looks like over 40,000 images during that trial period. So, you know, again, when we start coming back to, oh my gosh, you know, there wasn't much, much study done on this. There has been. Uh, and then also then too, we're not seeing those, those severe cases even out of those trials and or now. Bree, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. A uh, quick follow-up. For the variants, what are we seeing here um, in the region? You were you touched on that a little bit ago. Um, talk about that a little bit, if you could. So uh, I, I I got a hold of the Ohio Department of Health uh, late last week and asked that very question: Are we seeing any of the uh, any of the variants in in Lucas County, uh, specifically the the UK variant? And the answer I got was no, not at this time. Uh, so uh, I I got a feeling that we're actually going to be seeing it eventually. Uh, I heard that it's in all 50 states. So again, it's just, we go back to what we've talked about. Uh, we need to get vaccinated to, again, to, to, build, to build that barrier between us and that, that virus from jumping to per person to person so that it doesn't get that chance to mutate. But then also then to, we need to continue to, we have enough of vaccinated individuals in our community to wear the face covering to wash our hands, to you know, stay, stay, stay away from people as much as you possibly can. So that social distancing, uh, maybe not going to that big party. We still need to do those things until we can get more people vaccinated. Andrew, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Eric, I'm wondering if uh, any of the St. Patrick's Day activities that we saw around town yesterday concerned you at all? And if you have any worries about people packing sports bars this weekend for March Madness, since it was canceled last year. So uh, uh, actually we, uh, we, we contacted uh, some local officials today and asked what they saw last night. And for the most part, uh, everybody, uh, our bars pretty much were following the guidance and, and there was, we didn't have packed bars and restaurants, I think like we've had in the past. So am I still concerned? Yes, of course. Anytime that you have a get together like a holiday event, uh, you know, we're going to have to watch two, two weeks or so down the road to see how those, those cases are. 
again, still concerned about March Madness and you know getting together. Uh, please make sure that again um, you're you're doing the right things to protect yourself and protect everybody else. Face coverings, washing hands, staying away from people the best you can, and and again um, that's going to help us after after these events. Looks like that was the last question. All right. Well, if that is it, I appreciate your time. And uh, again, uh, we'll be getting more vaccine in our community. Uh, that that date of the 29th is going to be special for everybody. So uh, again, light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and we will be talking soon. Thank you.